Welcome, welcome to the show, my ambitious ones. It is me. It is me, your girl, Labora Lee. And oh, wait a minute. Ambitiously, the podcast. I'm going to run that one more time. Oh, yeah, I am. You have now tuned in to Ambitiously, the podcast. Today is a special day. I told you guys on last, um, well, first, let's get this out of the way. Let's talk about it. It is time to talk about it. First things first, the, you have tuned in for an episode of Hood History. Um, Hood History, sorry, I'm trying to get something together down there, but Hood History is one of the things, well, history is one of the things I'm very passionate about knowing more about. Um, this particular episode is special to me because it, I've, it's hard to explain. I'll explain it in a second. But what you need to know is this one is a special one for me. It definitely ties into Black history because it's very important for us to understand where we came from in order to know where we're going. That's, I'm a big, big fan of knowing those type of things. All right. But before we get to it, remember to like, share, and subscribe to this podcast. Um, if you would like to donate, that will be on the screen eventually. I am, I am, I am taking calls and text messages. The number is 443-850-4828, 443-850-4828. Or you drop a comment or ask me to drop a link if you would like to come and engage in the conversation that we are having about history, hood history, to be specific. So this uh, episode of hood history is important to me because one, this is a neighborhood that I used to live in, right? Um, it plays a huge part in this story about this beautiful woman, which I will, she's the main focus, but to be honest with you, I, wanted to discuss this because her her home is on a street called Utah Place, right? Um, I walk past her home like every day. I know it was a museum. I've read the plaque. You'll see that in a few minutes if you're watching as we go along in this podcast. But I will walk past her home every day and I knew it was a museum and they said that they it was still intact and I always wanted to go in there the problem was is I never could catch when they were open and I lived directly like that was the 1300 block I lived on the 1700 block of Utah place and never was afforded the opportunity to go in this lady's house you will see as we go through this story why I wanted, I knew it was exquisite and we will talk about the house a little bit as well. Um, we, we have to dive into the house because the house plays a vital role for her in Baltimore and some of the things that she was able to accomplish and the things that she wanted to happen. So we're going to get into her story. Now, if you don't know, this lady who is on the screen, that's because I don't want to, we're going to pause it right here. Um, this lady whom is on the screen, her name is Lily Mae Carol Jackson. She is a very important lady to the whole of the civil rights movement. Um, one would say she is part of the beginning of the civil rights movement. And we will get into that um, because her story is amazing and it is extraordinary. So we're going to talk about her a little bit this evening. If you don't mind, I would love to get in, get in, get into it. So, let's get to this first part. Jackson um, was born in 1889, July 5th, uh, 1975. So she lived a very, very long, long, long life. And you'll see it as we go. So I'm going to let this play while I tell you what's going on. Um, let's see. Are we moving? Yeah, we're moving. So if you don't know who she is, she's a pioneer, 
for civil rights, um, well, a pioneer civil rights activist, um, organized the the one of the top organizers of the Baltimore branch of the NAACP. Um, she's known as Dr. Lily or Ma Jackson and the mother of civil the civil rights movement lily may carol jackson is the pi the pioneer um she pioneered the tactics the non-violent um resistant to radical segregation used by martin luther king jr and others during the early civil rights movement so i told you this lady has a very long legacy um <laughs> she lived when you get into her story uh, she lived a very, very, uh, it was hard. It was tough. But if you think about it, it was dope because she did so much. So um, she was born in Baltimore, Maryland. Lily Mae Carroll Jackson was the seventh child of Methodist um, minister Charles Henry Carroll, who claim, claimed to be a descendant of Charles Carroll of the Carrollton. Um, and if you don't know, uh, he claims to be uh, a descendant of one of those whom signed the Declaration of Independence so that you know who um, Charles Carroll of Carrollton is. Um, they have a huge, huge history here in Maryland, and we'll get into that later on on another history, but this is about Lily. Um, so, like I said, he was a signer of the Declaration of Independence, and Amanda Bowman Carroll, who was said to be the granddaughter of a born free African chief named John Bowen. Okay, so that's, you know, that's her said. Um, heritage, I believe it because in those times, things like that happen, you know? Um, and it wasn't one of those things where so to speak, like they were just open about it, you know, you knew what you knew. One, it, on the slave side, you knew what you knew because us as slaves, we talked. And then on the um the master side, the master side, the, you know, the side of at the time the white folks, and this is not to to slander anybody, but it's just what it what it was it's what it was at the time. So, um, yeah. So these are her genetics. After completing her public school education and graduating from the color high school and normal school in 1909 which back then they really didn't name it, but you know, it is what it is. Jackson became a second degree, um, second grade teacher at the old Biddle street school. So Baltimore stand up, you know, she was trying to make some things happen, um, for educating the youth. So she taught the second grade. I'm quite sure they loved her. You know, with children, they don't like discipline, but at the same time, if you give them that vibe, they love you. And I'm quite sure at the time she was still, you know, fairly young as a second grade teacher. Uh, Jackson grew up signing, um, singing soprano in the choir of the Sh Sharp Street Methodist Church. See, these are historic sites that we don't take advantage of being Baltimoreans and frequent in these areas and i'm gonna say something about that in a minute but let's move on um on an occasion when the church was used to show religious motion pictures she met methodist um evangelist Kiefer albert jackson of Carrollton, mississippi a promoter of religious films jackson requested that she sing a song oh the love i love it already but he requested that she sing a song entitled the holy city years later in 1910 they were married once they were married they began to travel together and sing while the silent pictures were shown and lectured how um when wherever he showed his films so that's the cute thing you know black love is excellent so she met a hobby 
They got married in 1910, you know, and they kind of knew they had to focus like, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go out here and we're going to spread the word of the good Lord. I love it. It's beautiful. It's cute. Um, Upon the arrival of their first child, the Jackson family settled in Baltimore. In addition to their oldest child, Virginia, Mrs. Jackson gave birth to two other girls, um, Juanita Elizabeth. Born in Jan, I'm born on January the second. Uh huh. A Capricorn in 1913, and Marion followed by one son, Bowen Kiefer. Okay, so you know they moving, they shaking, they having their babies. Hold on, let's get this popping. They having their babies and all that good stuff. So um, family love. Hold on. Okay, are we moving? I need this to be moving, baby. Hold on. I just want to make sure because we're going to get this moving. Okay. So, now they done had the babies. They done set it up. We got to take care of our family. You know, it's all love, all love. So, during 1918, Jackson experienced a life-changing crisis. She underwent emergency surgery for mastitis. I probably said it wrong, but... It happens. Hold on, y'all. I don't know why I feel like my um, presentation is not popping the way I want it to pop. So we're going to get this fixed up here. And uh, we're going to get into it. So now we have gotten to... Hold on. No, it's not showing the way I wanted to show. So let's remove this from the screen and then put it back up. Um, Because things aren't going just the way I want them to. And I got a problem with that. Anyway, so she has to have this surgery. That has to be scary for her because who wants to, like, that's not some stuff you want to go through. All right, here we go. Um, So I'm quite sure that was kind of scary for her. All right, we'll add this to the screen again. Um, it says it's playing, so it looks like it's playing, so we're going to keep it moving. Okay, so she has the, um, the the procedure was so extensive. Her doctor told her that he had to remove more decayed bone from her head than he thought possible to survive. As a result, the right side of her face was permanently disfigured. Uh, Most pictures of her henceforth have been taken from the left side, and you'll see that in the photos that I I provided to you, Um, but from the left side to conceal her scars. Jackson was literally the mother of civil rights. Her daughter, Juanita, um, the first African-American woman to practice law in the state of Maryland. Um, married Clarence Mitchell Jr. in September on September the 7th I love things that happen in September I'm a Libra Uh, (laughs) 1938 Um, he was the he was the 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 NAACP chief Um, hold on what is going oh my gosh I hate when this happens y'all give me one second um Okay, I think we good. No, we not. It, it went too fast. I needed to slow down. So yeah, um, he was the the chief of the NAACP. I got this. I know what I gotta do, cause otherwise it's gonna get on my nerves. Um, wa- um, Washington lobbyist from 1950 to 1978 and became known as the 101st U.S. Senator Mitchell. Um, Mitchell's brother, um, Pyron Mitchell, was the first African-American congressman of Maryland. And Juanita and Clarence had four sons, Clarence M. Mitchell III, a former state senator, Mitchell Bowen, I'm sorry, Michael Bowen Mitchell Sr., former state senator, and Baltimore City Council member, and Kiefer Jackson Mitchell, MD. Uh, They had a lot of kids. George Davis Mitchell, Kiefer Mitchell's son, 
Kiefer Jr. Um, Kiefer, Kiefer J. Mitchell Jr. was a Baltimore City Councilman as well, and a, a, Maryland, a Maryland House delegate. I'm one of Maryland House delegates. Um, Clarence M. Mitchell, the fifth, uh, no, the fourth, was a member of the Maryland Senate State Senate as well. So a long, long line of um children sons because i'm gonna call them sons even when they're your grandchildren they are still you know part of your lineage so i'll say sons who served on the senate on city councils um you know they did a lot became doctors they did a lot and i'm quite sure she was very very proud of her legacy i am more than certain that she was i would have been like look at my babies my grandbabies, my, I would have been proud. I would have been proud. Um, <clears throat> so as a, <clears throat> sorry, let me get some water. One second. I'm trying not to put commercials in um, anymore. And you'll understand why in a little bit. <clears throat> I'll tell you because I have announcements after I finish with Miss Lily. I'm quite sure. I feel like that's what they call her. Like, hey, Miss Lily. You know, when they was walking, the kids walking down the street. But she had nicknames. I forgot. I have to go back and find out what those nicknames are again. But as a successful owner of a rental property, Jackson was free to engage in activities which led to community improvement. She sponsored the citywide Young People's Forum for her daughter, Juanita, and the leadership in the early 1930s, the forum conducted a campaign to end racial segregation beginning with the grassroots by, um, by where you can work. So that was like the beginning of how she was moving, moving within the civil rights. <clears throat> you know, that was like the beginning, like, all right, we don't want to live where we can't spend our money like and and i say that even now to this day there is this thing where if i can't go to this neighborhood and purchase things why would i take my money and i think that we should go back that's where really buy black the the buy black stance came from everybody think they're doing something brand new but this she had already started this she had already gave you guys the um picture and she wants to see if you can keep it, you know, if you can do something bigger with what she already stood for. And I don't think a lot of people understand that. I don't. I really, really don't. So um, she started the grassroots um, cause by where you can work campaign in 1931 jackson and her daughter juanita along with the forum's members encourage african-american residents of baltimore to shop at only businesses where they could work boycotting businesses with discriminatory hiring processes and we don't do that anymore um, the campaign's success led to similar protests in other cities around the country uh-huh we don't do that anymore people I'm moving this differently because um, I'm scared. Okay, so yeah. Um, at one forum gathering, Charles Hamilton Houston informed the audience, we could sue um, Jim Crow out of Maryland. Subsequently, um, Carol, um, Carl Murphy of the African American newspaper, I'm going to talk about them too, suggests that Lily join forces with the NAACP. This was the beginning of her 1935, um, I'm sorry, her, 1935. This was the beginning of her 35 year long tenure with the NAACP. In order, um, and in a role of president of ba the Baltimore branch of 19, in 1935. So things are moving, things are shaking. She just became the president of the, the, chap the NAACP. P chapter, which by the way is not far from where I am now, but at the time it wasn't located out where I live, but it's close to where I am now. And in a in a role as president, so she she became the president. 
of the NAACP, a position she held until retirement in 1970. So for a long time, she was the president of the NAACP chapter in Baltimore. 1934 um, saw the beginning of Third Good Marshall's employment with the Baltimore NAACP. The next year, he won a landmark case financed by the Baltimore chapter, um, Murray versus Pearson, removing the color barrier from admission to the University of Maryland of Law. And he, that was personal to him because he had applied to the University of Maryland Law School and they did not let him in. But that's a story for another day. I got, man, Baltimore is full of amazing black people. Um, well, was full of, of amazing black people. In 1946, she founded the Maryland State Conference of the NAACP and was elected to the National Board of Directors in 1948. So she was doing it, y'all. Um, in 1938, though, the NAA, um, she won the NAACP. Well, the NAACP won a historical legal challenge to racial barriers in publicly funded institutions. At the court judgment, um, a court judgment was um, overturned city policy assuring that all Baltimore city school teachers receive equal pay. Because like, teaching is a hard job and then y'all don't, at that time, you know they weren't um, providing the necessary equipment and tools and books that the kids needed. And it's like, you want us to come out here and teach with this old, these old behind tools and things, but you don't want to pay us all equally. You, and we got to do the same job that the other race races of teachers have to teach. So like, what are you doing? Pay us, pay us now. Uh, so Jackson's 1942 movement to register black voters began a shift in the city's policies that same year. She was named a um, named to Maryland's first interracial commission. She was also fundamental to Baltimore being the first southern city to integrate its schools after the landmark Brown um, oh, no, I forgot. Brown versus the Board of Education decision. I'm glad I, that happened because this thing be acting crazy. But Brown versus the Board of Education decision. Baltimore's fair, um, fair employment practices, um, practice law, practices law was passed in 1958. Um She was such a force in Maryland and Baltimore um, politics that Governor Theodore McKinley was noted to have said of her, I'd rather have the devil after me than Mrs. Jackson. Give her what she wants. She was, she had McKinley like, whoa, hello. Uh, <laughs> he was like, just give her whatever she wants. I don't, I don't, I don't have time for her today. I don't. I do not have time for this lady. She is going to rob my behind. Give her whatever it is that she wants. If she says she wants equal rights in this department, give it to her. But ultimately, her efforts built the Baltimore NAACP into the largest branch of the organization in the United States with a peak memberships um with the with a peak membership of 17,600 um Jackson died from myocardial infraction uh oh that sound painful i don't even know what that is i know, i should have do we have ooh, i don't know if i want to touch on that um and was uh she was they buried her at the mount Auburn City um, um, Cemetery in Baltimore. Uh, I gotta find out where that cemetery is. Not that I want to go to it, but you know, I like to know where things are. And I've heard of this cemetery, but I have. I'm gonna probably go and find out about it after this this episode because I'm intrigued. Once the research so re research begins, it's, it's hard to stop because you want to know more about the people that you've researched and 
for me, I, again, I love history. So I just, once that, that wheel starts spinning, I just got to keep riding. I got to keep on riding it. So whatever. Um, so Jackson's will, um, will call for the home she lived in and the um and lived in for 22 years now the address i I told y'all about this house i walk past this house every day and i always wanted to go in there and as the slide is going you should see some some clips of what it looked like in her house but um and what it looks like as a museum now um but she lived at this address for 22 years 1320 utah place in baltimore to be turned into a museum as the only museum named after a woman and the only civil rights museum in the United States, um, in the state of Maryland, it serves as, well, that, that's how it used to be. It's other civil rights joints here now, but, um, it serves as a, a repository of civil rights artifacts, um, including documents framed. Well, I guess if it's just only based upon civil rights, but documents um, f- um, framed uh, memorabilia and household furniture, furniture. And so a lot of that furniture that you see in some of these pictures that I'm po- I'm you know i put in the slide they come directly from her, you know her house and how she lived her house was fly y'all oh my gosh let me play this one more time so y'all can know like her house was man i knew it was fly i knew it i just i've never been in there so i would like to go in there um i'm gonna see how i can make those arrangements but um she has their civil rights um artifacts in there including doc, you know all kinds of things in there old furniture and stuff like that um Prominent amongst these was the life-size photo of Jackson with Rosa Parks. Oh, man, that's fly. Just inside the building's entrance. And I think I have that photo on here as well. I'm not sure, but I believe I have that photo on here. Upon its, um, its 1976 opening, the museum um, enjoyed a modest flow of visitors. Um, man, oh, man, I wish I would have been there. <laughs> But it, it enjoyed a modest flow of vid- visitors. By mid-1990, its maintenance had become unattainable for the extent that the structure was no longer viable as a museum. In 1997, Morgan State University, go ahead, Morgan, Baltimore, stand up, um, took responsibility of the facility as the curators placed its contents in storage. The facility became dormant awaiting um, significant matching funds to put in use a grant which was received from the state of Maryland. A reopening of the museum is currently planned for 20... This this was a while back, but this was in 2016. In 1986, Jackson, um, she was inducted into the Maryland Women's Hall of Fame. Now, I know y'all see some clips that I had um, I, when I was doing my research and, you know, I, I had to throw in pictures of the house. Um, I heard through the grapevine that they already, you know, started restoration on the museum and putting it back together. I totally hope so, because this is definitely a place where I want to visit. I have seen, um, recent videos and footage of what it looks like on the inside of it. So I'm going to do some more research and see, you know, if they open that back up, because that is a place that I would love, love, love to take my daughter. Like, I mean, I would, uh, man, I would love to take my daughter. I know she really hates my, um, (laughs) passion for history, but She'll get it one day. And like I told her, you got to know where you're coming from to know where you're going. I walk past this house every day. And you, as, as this slide goes through, you will see the, um, that, you know, what the most recent photos look like of the house, even the foyer, um, the foyer, the, um, the exhibits that they have in there of, you know, the dress. I think, I believe it's the dress she had on when she was holding her daughter. Um, this is one of, look at that fireplace. It's amazing. Look at the windows. Look at the, oh my gosh, look at the stairs. The staircase is, woo, 
that did it for me. All right, that's the joint where I'm um, her and Rosa Parks and all that morning. I, I can I can dig it. That's the part with the dress like that she actually wore. This house, look at the stairs, man. This house is extraordinary. And I always wanted to go in there and see it for myself. Um, I've always felt like it was my I was it was destined for me to walk into this building and look at how this lady lived and knowing the things that she did. I mean, she was with the likes of Martin Luther King, um, even uh, Jackie Robinson and, you know, a lot of the entertainers, they knew who she was. I, she, I told you she had a nickname. She had a nickname. And that's popular here in Baltimore, especially if you're prominent and, you know, the people, the younger generation, they know who you are. And it got mad love for you. It was like, my Jackson, what's up? That was one of them. My Jackson, what's up, girl? And they come through. I'm quite sure they wasn't talking to her like that. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just throwing my whole little hood tactics because i am a baltimorean so you know what's up girl what's up my jackson what's up ma? you know what i mean like and giving her love she seems like she was an extraordinary lady to know that's why i am very very um tapped into her story and the things that she was able to accomplish to me that is extraordinary that's a lot many people cannot even right now, especially right now, as we are in, you know, the times that we are in now is very few people that stand up like this lady stood up. It's very few people that stood up and was like, all right, you know what? I got to get out here and I got to make a difference. I got to change the way things look for my people. And she did that. So salute to Miss Lily Mae J um, Carol Jackson. You are um, a very, well, you were a very extraordinary um, woman. You are the mother of civil rights. You are the mother, you're definitely the mother of civil rights. Like, look at your lineage. You tied in with Clarence Mitchell Jr. And man, your daughter was married to him. Like, you are the mother of civil rights. You were out here working well into your 80s. And if it wasn't because of your medical situation, you probably would have tried to do it to 100. So s salute to Miss Lily May. Big salute to her. So um, this has been an extraordinary, extraordinary journey um, into Black history because it is still February. So we're still ce celebrating Black history. And I felt like this was a perfect journey, you know, to to travel upon because she had a long legacy of things that she did people she created with her own womb like this lady was extraordinary so i thought this was a great story to to start with for my um back the rest of the month i got a couple um i think i may have like maybe perhaps one more and i'm just going to throw one at the top at the top of <laughs> i'm going to throw one at the top of march just because I don't feel like black history should ever be over. I think I'm going to keep sprinkling them in here and there because I just feel like we should always talk about our history because if we, they trying to wipe it out of school. So if we don't talk about it, who's going to talk about it, honey? That's how I feel about it. So I'm going to talk about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, don't get it twisted. I'm going to talk about other history as well, but I'm going to make sure I was getting there as well. So announcements. I have a few things to say and I, I got to definitely show love and I'm going to show love. But before I show the love, I want to make sure that a few things are clear. First things first, Hood History is becoming its own podcast. Um, it's been thus far very well received and there are a lot of places that we could go with Hood History. So the decision has been made to turn it into its own podcast. I will probably, um, cause you know, it's a, it's a working progress. So probably the next two episodes will still air here on the ambitiously, the podcast, um, you know, um, show, but it will be its own show. It will have its own RSS feed 
it will be its own thing. Hood history. I will make the I will give the scheduled date of when that's gonna happen to keep you abreast because I don't want to leave you guys just like, well, what happened? Why she stopped doing her history? I'm not gonna stop doing his hood history. I just feel like hood history should be its own thing. Um, because it's not for everybody. Um, but if it is for you. When I make the move, when I put everything together, which is going to be very, very soon, I will let you know and then go over there and listen to her history because we will be dropping the knowledge. It's that simple. Um, also, I will not be adding. Um, I don't well. I will be adding, if you're watching this podcast from social media, the um, throughout the day as I'm promoting the, the podcast, I will be um, posting the commercials that I normally would p- post on the show. But I'm probably not going to be doing that too much anymore as well. Or maybe I'll drop them at the end of the show. Um, but the reason being is, well, no, we'll see. We'll see because... It's, the, it's ways to work around that, but less ads because we have other things going on and I have to accommodate the new sponsors, so we're going to put it together, but thank you for tuning in. Oh, no, I got to give my love real quick. Oh, man, I got to give my love. Thanks to anybody who is watching. Um, let's see. Let's see where you're watching from. I'm telling y'all, I always make sure y'all come through and drop a comment so I can shout you out in real life. Um, but thanks for anybody who is watching from YouTube and Twitch. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Um, come through, say your name so I can show you some love or at least come through and drop a comment and then I'll see your name and I will show you some love. I will shout you out. But I definitely have to give love to the people who download this podcast because they're the reason I keep doing these things that I do. And, you know, they tell me what they want and they tell me what they like. And I supply the demand. It's that simple. Um, my top six, United States, France, Germany, India, and the UK and Belgium. Thank you for being my top six. Nobody until somebody come and knock them off. They my top six, and I got a man left for them. They are my top six because they download the most. I love you all equally, and that's why I want to send love to Brazil, Netherlands, Singapore, South Africa, uh, Spain, uh, Australia, Japan, Mexico, Ireland, Nepal, Mauritius, um, Israel, Canada, Hong Kong. Ho, ho, I'm not finished. I'm not finished. Um, Russia. Hold on, I can get it all out. Russia, uh, and I want to make sure I don't miss anybody. So let me pull that up. Uh, So we said Russia, uh, China, uh, Poland, um, Tunisia, Venezuela. Hold on, I got some more people I got to put on this on this journey, baby. On this journey, baby. Uh, I don't know which one is which. So let's see if we can get one up here. Probably not. Uh, we'll see what we can do. Okay, probably not. But I I remember the back end, so we cool. So um, where do we go to Poland, Tunisia, Venezuela, um, also Turkey, Switzerland. Austria. I'm gonna try. I'm trying to remember verbatim. Cause oh, Pakistan. I don't want to forget you. Uh, Romania. I definitely don't want to forget you. Kenya. I don't want to forget you. And last but not least, Nigeria. Big love to you. Thank you for showing me love. Coming through, checking out the podcast. Um, thank you for those who've been showing love to her history. I did not know how it was gonna be received, but I figured if I'm going to keep talking about things then I should be talking about the things I love as well as we're going to have a a marketing situation popping off very soon as well because that's another passion of mine. But with that being said, I appreciate all of you. Thank you for tuning in to this story about Miss Lily Mae Carol Jackson. 
Ma Ma Jackson, the be specific. She's out here doing her way, doing her thing, paving the way for us to be great. So I think that we should appreciate her more. Um, to know her story, I told you some of her story, but if you, I'm, I, I, when they, let me, I'm gonna let you know if the the museum is popping. If you ever in Baltimore, and if it is open, and I'll let you guys know that it is open. Visit. It's a nice historical place to visit. It's beautiful. Man, it's beautiful. And um, I think that you will greatly appreciate Miss Mrs. Lily May Carol Jackson. Um, she had a lot. She brought a lot to the table. She brought a lot. She brought a lot to the table. You know, Miss Lily, you brought a lot to the table, girl, and we appreciate you. And that's an example of how they always took pictures from one side of her face so that you couldn't see her scarring. Um, but she was a beautiful lady, nonetheless. So with that being said, thank you. Thank you for tuning in to Hood History. Oh, there's some things I have to say before I get out of here because I say these things. If you would like to be in, the, I think I'm going to keep the email address the same for Hood History. I don't know. We'll find out. But um, if you would like to come on the show, hit us up ambitiously, the podcast at gmail.com. I'm not going to repeat it because it is in the description above or below, depending on how you're watching it. Remember, you can always drop a comment, call in, text, um, ask me to drop a link. And as long as you're on your best behavior, I will let you in the building. You just have to behave yourself. We don't do the nonsense. Fire Friday was yesterday, but, you know, just in case you check it out, remember, don't watch the playback on Facebook. You, I, the best place to go to watch that is on YouTube or download the podcast for the playback because Facebook be muting some of the music sometimes. But I do have permission to play any of the music that I play um, on screen and written. So no, the, I don't play people's videos without their permission. And usually they're about play whatever you want. And I'm like, all right. Uh, <laughs> again, remember to like, share, and subscribe to the podcast, Ambitiously the Podcast. And when we get Hood History up and running, tune into that too. Okay. Um, check out the website and you'll get more information there um, above anything. www ambitiouslyentertainment.com www.ambitiouslyentertainment.com you can also check out the boutique the magazine is there everything's there so go there check out what we got going on over there and we're going to get our station head together um, real soon because uh, it's going to be some other stuff that I want to say and that's probably the best place for me to go and say it um oh no no actually and I have another situation it'll be up in a few days so i'll let you know about that when it comes donations if you would like to donate to the show dollar sign capital l the rest all lowercase you are l-u-c-i-d-i-t-y lord lucidity to lord them in clearly um yeah that's what that is so that you know because what is that what is that well that's what it means lore you know lord them in clear lucid, lucid clearly so lower lucidity. Yeah, that's what it is. And we are streaming on all streaming sites. Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, even Samsung, um, Amazon Music. We, we're everywhere. So you might want to go and check some previous episodes that we put up. But go check them out. We're building over here, people. And I need y'all to get down with the get down. This is what I need. Um, so with that being said, now I got to get out of here. I love you guys. Thank you to those who came and watched and paid attention to what we had going on over here. It's love. It's all love. Um, staying, um, first things first, mind your business. Everybody's business is not your business. If you like to be in everybody's business, come here on me to get my day. And I tell you people's business. I will be telling some business on Monday because this Chris Brown and them situation is crazy. Um, love your babies, hug your babies, encourage your babies. You are the first line of encouragement and they need that. Tell them they are the greatest of all times and they can do anything they want, they want to do, put their mind to, they can do it. They want to work for NASCAR, tell them be the best NASCAR driver, pit boss, commentator, or whatever the hell else they do over there in NASCAR. I don't know. I've never worked work for NASCAR. If they want to work for NASA, tell them to be the best astronaut. 
um, engineer, secretary, receptionist, janitor, whatever else they do at NASA. I never worked there either. But just encourage them to be the best of them. They need that. And last but not least, let me get you right. Let me get you right. Because there's some things that people need to know in this world. Last but not least, stay in your lane. Because you jump in my lane, you're going to get this. You don't want her. You want her. She's so sweet, cute, and cuddly, and lovable, or at least her. I'm happy when I'm purring. Just, yeah, you want her. You want her. But <laughs> just stay in your lane, because usually what happens when you jump into other people's lanes is a collision. Well, who wants that? Nobody. So just stay in your lane. And with that being said, I got to get up out of here, y'all. I love you guys. Thank you to those who tuned in this evening. I did a double header. I'm very proud of myself because I didn't know if I could do it, but I banged it out. Have a good evening. Be safe. Have fun. And just be great. Good night. Bye.